So how personal data is operating is of interest to all of us as citizens, uh, as consumers, but it's also of interest to the sector because it's one of the most valuable commodities that we, we sort of trade in. And it's also, for many organisations, a kind of problem child. We've got new regulations coming in, we've got new ideas, and there's a real sort of leadership vacuum about, uh, about these issues. So that's why we've come together with a wide range of people to talk about this at the party conferences, because we believe that it's very important to get policymakers talking about this, to get political parties engaged on this topic, so that as representatives of wider society, they're both informed by the technology, but able to have a serious conversation about what we want as a society. Because ultimately, a lot of these issues are not ones that are going to be solved by the tech sector. They're going to be solved by uh, the tech sector collaborating with wider civil society and understanding what real people want. So today we're here at the Conservative Party conference and we've got a great panel which includes Nicola Blackwood uh, MP who's just uh, recently been appointed chair of the Science and Technology Select Committee. We've got Liz Cole who's a policy manager at Citizens Advice and we've got John Bernstein who's an editor at Prospect magazine. I think in order for the British economy to benefit from consumer data, first of all, we've got to explain to the consumer what the benefits are of taking all that data, using it and offering it out as a, as a service. So once we've decided what that story is and what those services are, that's one part of the equation. And the second part of the equation is to reassure those consumers that there is trust and there is security and there is privacy around that data. The British economy can benefit from personal data through a greater democratisation of that data. At the moment, the value is locked up in a handful of major corporates who exploit it. If we can put the control of that data back into the hands of the individual and dynamic SMEs, they can really start to drive value from it. And I believe the BCS has a big role to play in making that happen. We can see that um, from a McKinsey report recently, um, effective use um, of data analytics has the potential to increase um, a company's profitability by 60% um, if they are using that data effectively. Um, but it's not just um, about the economy, it's also about our public services. Um, it's perfectly clear that if we're going to crack um, this real problem of fiscal um, a responsibility alongside sustainability of public services with an ageing population, a growing population, we're going to have to make better use of technological solutions and data sharing. Um, but we have some hurdles that we need to get over in order to do that, such as consent and confidentiality and public trust. So um, personal data isn't really working very well for, for anyone at the moment. So you know, consumers are starting to get more and more worried about what's going on and businesses aren't getting what they need either. You know, it's, it's fair to say that we need to do things differently for the economy to, to benefit and for all of us to, to benefit. We've kind of lost touch with some of the reasons why we give data to organisations and in so doing we're undermining um, the value of the organisations that are delivering products and services for us and that are often in our pension funds. So in order for the UK economy to really grow, we need uh, to have ways of sharing personal data um, from us to organisations. Now, what's missing in that at the moment is really a kind of trust environment. Uh, sharing your data is really uh, something that people do very frequently and they're happy to do on one, on one level, but they're never quite sure whether they're sharing it with the right organisations or how they're going to, to be using it. And uh, if we get to an environment where people can trust that their data is going to be used in ways consistent with their wishes, they'll give more of it and they'll let you do more with it. I, th I think the, the, the real concern I have about the, the use and sharing of data is that it's not transparent. And it's a difficult thing to do, but we all kind of sign those agreements uh, when we're using a new application. We don't read them. None of us read those things. And therefore, there's a lack of transparency. So somehow we need to be able to communicate, this is the data we are using. This is how we're going to use it. This is the way you opt out. This is the way you opt in. And if further down the line you decide, actually, I've changed my mind, there needs to be that capacity to do just that. I think I'm concerned about what it's going to be used for in the future and how safe it is and what I could do about it if something goes wrong. I think in other issues, if, if something went wrong with my bank or if I 
bought some clothes which were faulty or my toaster blew up, I kind of know exactly what I need to do. If something goes wrong with my data, I feel clueless. And I mean, this is an area that I work in and know a lot about. So I think I have some fears about that. And a bigger question of what ha what's going to happen to it in the future if it's mixed with all sorts of different data sets. How, how is that going to affect my life in different ways? My greatest concern about the way personal data is used and shared is the lack of transparency for consumers, not just about individual instances of sharing, but the whole economy that underpins their personal data. Almost every service we consume online is paid for through our personal data, and the value behind that remains opaque to us. Until individuals are able to understand the value of their data, how it's used and by whom, they will never actually be able to control their privacy. Today's discussion was really useful in that it feels like we've moved on a bit from just listing the pros and cons and have got to a place where we all agree something needs to be done differently and we know what doesn't work. Um, but the next step is going to be really tricky. It's going to be working together to find a solution. Um, and I think that means working across technological solutions, policy makers, um, consumer groups, and everyone in that realm. And I think there was a, a lot of consensus um, in the room. It's not even a party political issue. Big data is a huge opportunity for the UK. It is something that we have a national um, ability in and the government has invested a great deal of money in Daresbury um, and other centres in this. Um, but it can't, it's not enough um, to have the research, it's not enough um, to be investing in the startups. We have to be um, spreading that um, investment out into um, interconnected um, solutions. Um, and what was clear from today was that there are some cultural barriers that do need to be overcome, public trust, um, confidence in sharing. Um, data and also understanding what those benefits are. A lot of this will come down to effective communication from industry as well as government um, and um, we're going to have to get those key pieces of legislation right so that they um, act as an enabler rather than a barrier to what will be I think one of the key opportunities for our economy but also for our public services over this next decade. The big thing I've taken from today's discussion is that this is really complicated and it doesn't naturally fall into the sort of uh, the lines you would expect. It isn't about the people who are very privacy uh, aware and those people who don't care at all, nor is it a sort of a, a libertarian or nanny state uh, discussion. It's far more nuanced, it's far more interesting than that and that's where the complexity lies. I think, yeah, absolutely, it's a cultural challenge as well. I think we, we need to get our heads around this stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a completely different dimension and a completely different volume in terms of the data that we are uh, giving away, if you like. So there is definitely a, a cultural aspect to this. Well, the biggest challenges that we're facing at the moment are public awareness, public trust, and people's perception that they've lost control of their data. The Information Commissioner put out a report recently that said two-thirds of people feel like they've lost control of their data. 98% uh, of people want to have more control of that data. Um, and in a second report by the Digital Catapult, um, over 60% of people said that they believed that when they handed over their data to an organisation, that organisation used it purely for their own gain. It's really hard for people to unpick where their data has been collected and how it's been used. Um, we know it's valuable to companies, otherwise they wouldn't try so hard to get it from us, but we're not actually seeing the, the kinds of values that we would like to get out of it. So we end up being targeted with all sorts of different adverts, often for things we've already bought, um, and then we're constantly told that we could do loads more with our data, but how we can actually make that happen isn't quite yet clear.